Hello everyone and welcome to Power Playground. This is your host Michael and today we are going to be continuing our free CAD tutorial series here. What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and do that like cooking show thing where I show you my finished product here. Well, not quite finished. I think I'm going to do a few more things changed. So as you can see, I added these little hexagonal cuts through the, uh, the actual piece here to give it a cool little hollow aesthetic here. And then of course the bottom I made a little bit more enhanced, a little bit more better. Uh, out of that a little ridge there. As you can see, I, I've drawn this hexagonal shape here. Let's um, go into it. So eight millimeters on each side. I've done some uh, math and rough calculations to uh, get it to where it needs to be. Um, it's pretty pretty tricky here, but yeah, essentially it just uh, it's in relation to or it's properly spaced across all dimensions here, X and Y. In this case, it would be X and Z. So now we wanna do something a little different here. We're gonna do a cutout, but not in the same way we did before. If we try to turn it into a pad, and then we cut it from this shape here, we're gonna try this linear pattern feature tool here. But unfortunately, if I try to do that, I will not be successful. I don't know, it just doesn't like doing it. I, that's kind of what hemp, what why this tutorial is so late because I had so many issues with it, but I'm gonna show you the proper way to do it. Okay, so we had this little sketch here. Now we want to use this feature called a pocket. Basically, it just cuts a hole through pretty much anything you want it to. Except, oh, how about no? We do not have the ability to do so. Okay, so the message says, please create a sketch or a 2D object first. It must have a support face on a solid. Now, if you're like me, and if you don't speak Dutch, then you're probably not gonna have much of an idea of what exactly it's going on about. But what it means is this particular shape here it needs to be a part of this larger shape that we're cutting out of. You see this little guy here? It says map sketch to a face. So we're gonna select a sketch. In this case, it's our sketch 02. Whoops. Okay, so we need to select the face of this main piece. Just the face, not the whole thing. <laughs> we try this. Okay, hey, I think we did it. Um, I don't know why it's freaking out and wanting, okay. I think we just need to negative this value. Uh, uh, don't mind me, I'm just, you know, not knowing exactly what I'm doing here. There we go. So yeah, we just had to like delete the previous measurement and redo that. It's weird. You can't just put a negative value because I guess it's like some sort of weird divide by zero type thing. I don't know. It's a weird program and it's not a, uh, it's a, it's a beta. It's open source. So, you know, okay. So now it is mapped to this face. So let's go ahead and try this. Um, we want to go ahead and click type. And we're gonna go through all, and boom, it just cut a big old sneaking hole through. Okay, so now you're saying, well, how the heck do you get all these other shapes? Uh, do you have to keep doing it one by one? Nope. So now we're gonna go ahead and do a linear pattern feature on, on we're still on the part design. We've been on that for a bit. Now, I know my length is gonna be 80 from end to end in this shape here. Now, I wanna go ahead and do five of these bad boys. And hey, looky there, we got ourselves a bit of a shape. So the linear pattern, you have to do these in like exact steps. It has to be a pocket. It can't be like a pad for some reason. I don't know, it just like wouldn't let me do it. Yeah, first off, yep, you do the, uh, you map the sketch to a face, then you do a pocket, and then of course you go ahead and do your linear pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and cut ahead to when I have all of these little guys finished here. I got these four little guys taken care of here. Looks pretty good. Now we are at the parts, so we wanna go ahead and do our center cutout here. Now I had the same thing as we had before. Didn't really change anything on that here. Let's go ahead and toggle this visibility because I don't really need that right now. Don't need this sketch. Just wanna get everything out that I don't need. So you wanna go ahead and get the uh, height. This has a height about 40. But I want the this guy here. Da, 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 da. So we'll go ahead and copy this value. That is our total height. For reference, I'm going to go ahead and just enable that. But we are going to go ahead and create a sketch. And this is going to be on the Y and Z plane. So to create our little chamfer, pretty simple. Just a shape like this. Oh. If you don't make sure, wait until it's yellow, you won't have a complete shape. And I'll just be weird. So now we want to go point to point, and we'll go and go ahead and get our measurement. That is okay. Our forty-five point seven seven three five, and then let's go ahead and get our point to point here. That's gonna be just thirty. This guy is fifteen. Let's go ahead and go back, do a little cheating. Okay, that makes sense, cool. So these are all equal sizes here. So actually, instead of doing this normal type dimension, 
I want to go ahead and do one of these guys. 15, yeah. And then click, 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 equal. Hey, there we go. Okay, so there's our shape. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a pad. We're going to do about 100. And then we're going to go ahead and move it back on the x-axis. And then, let's see, what was the other... So yep, essentially, when we go ahead and toggle our visibility, we want the, the items to match up like so. So what this is going to do is this is going to create a common shape. I'll go ahead and select both. Doesn't matter which order you select them in, in this particular scenario. I'm just holding control to do so. Go apart. And at this point, we're going to make an intersection. As you can see, it basically cuts out anything where both shapes don't intersect with each other. I'm going to go ahead and do this guy, do this guy, and cut. And hey, there we go, we got our piece. But you may be asking, what are we gonna do here now? Well, I kinda wanna do this sort of uh, curved theme at the bottom and add some like little legs. I wanna go ahead and use the least amount of material I can get away with. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make little cuts out for here. Yeah, we can just go ahead and do an intersection there. That should be good. That actually looks really good. So we're gonna do the same thing as we did before. We're gonna do that intersection daily. Go back to part and we'll do this guy. It may be a bit wobbly when it sits on the desk. I kinda of wanna give it like little feet on the side. We'll go ahead and keep with the theme and we'll go with a hexagonal shape. So that's gonna be an X and Y axis. So let's go ahead and go to part, back to part design. So yeah, something like that. There we go. It's one of these guys, a thing. I like 36 is a good round number. Let's go ahead and pad it up. Probably should have done these leg things way before I even started or considered like cutting everything out. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll uh, have to revert back a few things here. As you can see, if I try to do with the pad, this uh, linear transform guy, no go. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna go ahead and manually copy these because there's only four of them. There's not a lot, so that's fine. Copy, paste, 36 multiplied by two. That is how much I want it to go that away. Fingers crossed this is actually works. Hey, there we go. Negative 22. Boom. So now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out what's what. So there we go. We've reverted everything to where it needs to be. So that cut was still like nested. And I was like, where is it? Where is it? So essentially what I'm doing here now is I'm kind of denesting everything because basically I want, what I ultimately want to do is take this center piece and uncut it from the whole shape. I'm going to cut it once I add the feet in with the rest of the shape or the object so that the they won't be sticking on the inside or sticking out of the inside part. Okay, so there we go. I'm going to go ahead and uh, union these suckers together. Do the intersection first, sorry. And then we'll go ahead and uh, union our guys here together. We got that, then we got this, and then we'll go ahead and uh, union those suckers together. And now, what we have here is our two shapes. So now we can finally go ahead and cut these out. And hey, bada bing! What we had to do is I had to go ahead and uh, do this, or do the intersection of this particular shape to where I cut these edges out. And then with the uh, the main piece, and then I had to union that with these uh, four base leg pieces here. And then I went ahead and did the uh, the cut with the center piece that we made previously. Now I could curve some edges. I don't really want to do that. I kind of like this shape. I'm really interested to see how it's going to print. I'm going to go ahead and save this sucker. So I'm going to export this. In FreeCAD, you have to select which object you want to export. Make sure it's selected in green. And then go to export. And it should give you an option. I want to go ahead and do STL. I'm going to fire up my Simplify 3D here real quick. Wow, it's actually a lot smarter than I thought it would be. Now, of course, I could scale that up if I wanted to. With this not being so steep, no supports on the bottom base, which is neat just on these little hexagonal cubes, which will be nice for printing. So we'll go ahead and uh, print it out here now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut to the time lapse. <laughs> Alright everybody, so I went ahead and uh, 
actually initially printed off the smaller version. This is the proper size of it here. And this big one is 150 times scale. I just scaled it up in the uh, Simplify 3D slicing software I use. Now, as you can see, this is a standard US letter or envelope. And yeah, it fits a lot, uh, just, it fits okay in the little guy, but I wanted something a little bit more beefier that'd be able to hold a lot more. Of course, it's going to get a little, good little side profile, but overall, I'm definitely impressed with this here. There's a little bit, I could probably work a little bit better on like the support settings for my printer. Yeah, there's just a little bit of crusty stuff on the overhangs of these hex arches, but overall, it's pretty good here. I might even try it without the actual support there. I don't know if that'll work, how well that'll work. Everything sits pretty well, pretty solid. All right, folks, just want to thank you for watching here. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button. Consider subscribing and check out some other videos we have here right over this over here. And have a good day.